Hello, America. The people spoke in Missouri yesterday. Oh, those meaningless worms, what are they saying now? What? They voted overwhelmingly to reject Obama's mandate that forces people to buy health insurance, something that's never, ever happened before in America. You've got to buy something to be a citizen in good standing. Oh, it's going to be fun to watch the White House explain this one. Of course, we already know what they're going to do. Barack Obama will say something like, no, conservatives and Republicans, they just want to go back to the same old ideas that have never worked. They're standing in the way and wanting to block progress. Yada, yada, yada. They have not come up with a single solitary new idea to address the challenges of the American people. They don't have a single idea that's different from George Bush's ideas. Not one. That's right, Mr. President. We're dummies. We don't have a single new idea. Yeah, you know what? Republicans, Republicans don't have a lot of new ideas. There are a lot of retread ideas. That's why. I think, Mr. President, you should talk to those Tea Party people. <laughs> they got some really new ideas they haven't tried in about, oh, 150 years. Of course, now, your ideas, your ideas, they're brand new. When, when, when I first heard your ideas about 1848, I'm trying to think, when did, when did Karl Marx write that stuff down? Oh, this is new, seriously. You've got ideas that have unquestionably failed, and failed spectacularly every time they've been tried. No, I, I know, I know. Oh, it's just never been done right. <laughs> broken economy after broken economy, continent after continent, millions dead. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if it can be done right. I'm not willing to give it a whirl. Why are you, Mr. President, giving a few people power to save the collective? You know, I've been thinking about this. It's not even Marxism. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Older than 1848. Yeah, a lot older. Maybe the oldest idea known to man. I will save them all. Where have I heard that? I will save them all. And they will all return to you. Give me the credit. Oh, that's good. That's good. I know I've heard that someplace. Kind of the ends justify the means and uh, solid. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I remember where I heard that. It wasn't Sololinsky, but I read about it in his book. Who did Sololinsky dedicate his book to? It was, um, I can't remember. Anyway, it's not important. Children, children, listen, the government is going to help you. Yes, with socialism. It's spectacular. Now, I will say that Barack Obama is right in one regard when he says that the GOP hasn't uh, done this. Watch. Understand, it'd be one thing if the Republicans had seen the error of their ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's right about this. Republicans haven't had their come to Jesus moment. They're still doing the same thing. Why? Because a lot of them are progressives. Oh, that might be the problem. I don't know if you heard Trent Lott on the Tea Parties. He said, quote, We don't need a lot of them Jim DeMint disciples. As soon as they get down here, we need to co-op them. Whoa, that's good. Good for you, Trent. You see, it's big government politics as usual with too many people in Washington. Only the GOP is just slightly smaller government than the big government of Democrats. They're all progressives. I shouldn't say that. Not all of them. There are several people... I think of maybe a couple that haven't completely lost their soul uh, in the Democratic Party, and they're maybe 20, I'm not sure anymore, that haven't lost their soul in the Republican Party. See, that's the problem with our country today. Everybody's lost their soul to progressivism. You aren't being presented with a real choice. Hey, wait a minute. I... <laughs> it's a good thing I read, I don't know if you've read this very, very good book, Trying to remember the author. Genius, whoever wrote this. In part two, duh, in, uh, oh, this is my book. K 
Carol Quigley said this, Overton Window, here's what he said, this is uh, one of the guys, in fact this is just the guy who got uh, Clinton in as a Rhodes Scholar, he said the argument that two parties should represent opposed ideals and policies is a foolish idea. Instead the two parties should be almost identical so that the American people can throw the rascals out at any election without leading to any profound or extensive shifts in policy. Then it should be possible to replace it every four years if necessary by another party, which will uh, be not None of the, those things, but we'll still pursue with new vigor approximately the same basic policies. Well, that's crazy conspiratorial talk. My gosh. I mean, look at the difference between these two parties. They were spending like drunken sailors. Of course, they say they're against big, big spending, and they're big spenders, but they said they were against big spending because these guys were spending too much and so then these guys got in and said we've got to stop spending so much but they're actually bigger spenders than these guys and these were enormous spenders that's weird these guys are for the war but they didn't really want to fight it with everything we got these guys are against war and they're fighting it exactly the way we've been fighting it these guys are against corruption these guys are against corruption too bad both of them are corrupt and then of course they're against government health care talk to me about prescription drugs and these guys are for government health care, and they've made our wish come true. Isn't that great? See, here's the thing. You're, you've, this is your choice. The lesser of two evils, progressive L, or the progressive extra strength. That's what it is. And that's by design. I told you a few weeks back about this hep cat. Jill Rogers, dude. You read him, and you think, this guy's a genius. He is. He's one of these big, evil, powerful progressives, you know, who several of those bogus front organization progressives, you know, they used to funnel money around. This guy. This guy started something called the New Party, co-founded the New Party. It's a, it's a radical leftist uh, party. In fact, it was the one that <laughs> supported Barack Obama in Chicago. But that's behind this. Those aren't the facts you're looking for. He said this, the Democratic Party has an abusive relationship with progressives. Democrats take our time and our money and then they almost always move to the right. The best way to end an abusive relationship is to develop the ability to leave it. We need a meaningful threat of exit from the Democratic Party. A new party that can punish unaccountable Democrats by running against them. That's genius. That's almost like, I remember, <laughs> the Tea Party. That's the same philosophy. And what did they do? They went and they muscled these people. These people are over. If you think the Democrats still exist, you're fooling yourself. I want you to read what this man said back in the 90s. Read the whole article on this guy and what he said. You can do it at glenbeck.com or sign up for my free email newsletter. It'll be included in there. Grab it right now, will you? Read it. Especially if you're a Democrat. <laughs> it's done. That was the plan from the beginning. They didn't want to start a new party. They wanted to have legitimate threats so the Democrats would actually listen to them, cave to them, they'd get inside and co-opt them. Now the Democrats are dead. But just as progressives always do, they just, they're not progressives, they're Democrats. They're not progressives, they're liberals. Until they destroy it and then they become something else. They just used fear and intimidation. Where have I heard that before? Used fear and intimidation and they co-opted this party. Well, guess what? Democrats, you're done. You're done. You've sold your soul piece by piece, time and time again, to these people. And now, it's over. The Democrats that we all knew, most people don't really understand this yet, it's over. It's a progressive party. The Republicans are playing and they're traveling down the same path, except they're like doing it like Grandpa. They're just moving a little slower. You know what I'm saying? Anytime President Obama is cornered on socialism or overspending, what does he say, and accurately so, what does he point out that the Republicans always did?